Yeah, soldiers, it's your boy name is coming to you with another video, and this is a compilation video for why the Naruto Part 1 movies cannot happen. For this series, I started to talk about different Naruto movies that took place in the Part 1 timeline and explain why they cannot fit in the canon of the story. I want to begin by saying this video will be only covering pre Shippuden movies as I am in the process of watching them, but it won't be till next year when I start releasing videos about them for this particular series. Also question today, should I make a server video to cover the Naruto OVAs? I think they are kind of their own thing and they aren't really movies or fit in the filler video series I mentioned in my first video of the day in the, well, other video. Let me know in the comments below for this video, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Yeah, soldiers, it's where the United States can turn a video, and this is why Naruto the movie Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow cannot happen. And it's the start of a new series as I'm going to be talking about different Naruto movies and why they can't fit in the original Naruto story. Yes, I'll be talking about Naruto last as it is canon, but before we get to that, today we're covering Naruto the movie Ninja Clash and Land of Snow, and then after this video, I'll be working on Legend of the Stone of Galel, and then after that, Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom in the following months. Now, I'm going to make something very clear. This video is not my personal opinion on the actual quality of the movie. This video is something objective as to why it cannot happen in a Naruto story. If you feel like I missed anything, leave a comment below. Before I get into this video, shout out to my boy Drew for ending this video and watching the movies with me. I am watching them with him dubbed, so yeah, that's pretty fun, I guess. If you join my Patreon for $5, you can join us in VC when we're producing these videos and giving commentary of the movie as well. Follow me on Twitter for a good, good way to interact with me. I mean, it's pretty great way to interact with me since I'm on there all the time. Also my Discord, which is linked in the description. And I also have an Instagram, can't forget about that. And with all that away, I can get right into this video. But first, spoil warning, if you do not want to be spoiled on this movie, make sure you do not watch this video, okay? And also, this isn't a review, but you might be wondering what my thoughts are on this movie anyways. But in my personal opinion, this is an 8 out of 10 movie. And I'll explain why if you want me to review this movie in the future. Though, my other thought that the first half was pretty bad, but after that it was pretty good, so take either review as you will. Got it? Good. Now let's get into this. Alright, so Ninja Clash and Lance Snow was the first ever Naruto movie released, obviously, as is the first movie. It was also the only Naruto Part 1 movie to have ever been shown in the United States theaters. With the last and the Boris movie each getting one down the line when they first came out, it's kind of neat that each generation got their own movie in theaters as far as the United States goes. Here's your last warning, it's again, spoil warning, if you don't want me spoiling the movie, do not watch this video, okay? You're still here? Alright, here we go, but before I do, question of the day, should I make a server series covering Naruto filler? I will say that if I do happen to do this, I will cover it in arcs and one-off episodes in a compilation video or short individual videos, and clear anything that fits the mold of a recap episode will get a one-shot type of video. As I doubt, I will have much to say, well, because they are recap episodes. Let me know in the comments down below. The timeline for this movie is after Search for Sonati arc and before Sasuke's departure. This is implied due to Sasuke's ability to use Chidori and Naruto's ability to use Rasengan. This movie chronologically takes place in between Naruto episode 101 and 102 of the original Naruto anime. I would like to note that we watched the movie dubs, so if the original Japanese script got anything wrong, let me know in the comments below. While you're watching, I'll my editor put some timestamps when certain points of note happen for each point I'll be presenting in the video. I will have my opinion on certain things, but like I said earlier, this will be as objective as possible. All right, the first problem with this movie is Team 7 never went on any missions after his search for Tsunade arc. Sasuke had just gone to rest in a hospital after getting destroyed by Itachi and then challenged Naruto afterwards. There was no room for this team to go on a mission like this, so how could they have gone on a mission to protect a freaking princess? The second problem is inconsistencies with abilities in the movie. The main example is Kakashi copying Ice Release techniques. Ice Release is a Keke Genkai, and the Sharingan cannot copy Keke Genkai techniques. I don't know how they thought they could get away with this, but it's frustrating when it happens. Third problem is Naruto being such a simp in the beginning portion of the movie. Like, incredibly simpy. He is way too obsessive in the beginning to the point it is out of character for him. I mean, this guy doesn't really fanboy over anything unless it involves learning a powerful jutsu or ramen. Why is he simping over an actress of heart in this movie? 
This dude was chased after her so much to get an autograph that you would think her name was Sasuke Uchiha. For promise Sakura is too useful in this movie. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. The real problem is Kakashi's backstory in relation to the film. Kakashi's never been to Land of Snow except I believe in a Kakashi Hida in light novels, and that was when he was Hokage. And even when he faced off against people from the Land of Snow, these antagonists were nowhere to be found. Or at least don't mention them in any media like the manga or light novels. Fifth problem is the technology. Unironically, I feel like the technology used in this movie would fit better in Boruto than Naruto. The technology used here just feels like something that shouldn't exist and it's way too overpowered, specifically this chakra armor. It negates ninjutsu and genjutsu. You heard that correctly. It negates ninjutsu and genjutsu. Does that sound like something that should be in part one Naruto? Hell nah! I can buy the train, I can buy the blimp, I can even buy the hologram, but there is no way in hell you can tell me that this armor exists in part 1 Naruto, especially since they aren't even using special seal or anything like that, it is literally just some energy orb! Also, let's also talk about the fact that these antagonists fought, they could take on the 5 great nations if they had money. All 5 of them. You know the ones with Tsunade, a, Kakashi, Onoki, Gara, and every other single shinobi in those villages because they have money? Are y'all out of your minds? That's more delusional than people who think Amber Heard is innocent. Any of these villains somehow paid off the entire Akatsuki, Obito wouldn't let that happen for long. It would interfere too much with his plans and be too much of a problem no matter how much money they got. Another problem is that in this movie is Shuna Kakashi sees Nara to use Rasengan. But in episode 108 of the Naruto series, it is shown that this is when Kakashi truly sees Naruto use Rasengan for the first time. I am sure Kakashi wouldn't be soon enough to forget something major like that if this movie was canon. And the final issue is the existence of Rainbow Chakra in this movie. And I can't even taste the rainbow. Anyways, Rainbow Chakra does not exist and is nowhere near the manga or light novels that are canon. You could try to make the argument that it could exist in Naruto world, but they don't even bother to give us an explanation on how it works. Is it a visual thing? Is it its own move? I have no clue! It probably would have worked had it just been part of the movie Team Sen was watching in the beginning, but no! Naruto whoops the main tag is his ass with it too! In conclusion, this movie cannot happen. It is way too many inconsistencies with abilities, characters, and such, and it's just something that just cannot happen if you're familiar with the story of Naruto because there's just no room for it. Now, with that being said, I still give the movie a low 8 out of 10, which would be the equivalent of someone getting an 80 to 83 on a test slash quiz. What, just because I think this movie cannot happen so this does not mean I didn't enjoy it. Plus, even considering the bad first half and these inconsistencies, it was still a fire movie, especially in the second half. I mean, come on, even if Rainbow Chakra does not make any damn sense, seeing Naruto use a Rainbow Rasengan is just raw as hell. But in the end, Naruto Clash in the Land of Snow cannot happen. And this is why Naruto the movie Legend of the Stone of gel can't happen. And by the way, my personal review of it is a 9 out of 10. And my other fight had a pretty good first stab before it fell off, but you know, that's just our personal opinions about it. And finally, of course, like and subscribe if you like the content and give your comment if you have an opinion on the vid and now let's get right into the video all right so naruto movie legend of sonic Gelo is the second naruto movie for the naruto part one section of the series here's your spoiler warning now as i'll be talking about events in the movie if you don't care then here we go the timeline for this movie is between two filler arcs so that's a red flag right there the events of this movie took place between the misaki tracking and b kochu search missions Again, I would like to note that we watched the movie dub, so if the original Japanese script got anything wrong, let me know in the comments below. The movie revolves mostly around a special mineral called the Gallosim, which is magic bullshit. And yeah, we are unfortunately going to get into it. While you're watching, I'll have my editor put some timestamps when certain points of note for each point I'll be presenting in the video well, occur. And while I will have my opinion on some things, this will be as objective as possible. Alright, the first problem with this movie is once again the technology or glove powers which I'll refer to them as, well, now. There are shields that are used which do not exist in the Naruto series, you can see it here in this clip. Temujin, a new character, has a sword that has Galel energy around it. What the hell Galel is, I will tell you later. Basically the sword is a Keke Genkai that is when a light nature chakra is the closest canon comparison. 
Yeah, Temujin is probably strong as Haku being lowballed. There is this massive moving technological fortress that the villains use to traverse, and worst of all, elevators. Fucking elevators! Really? All this is, once again, in Boruto, not Naruto. The airship and train from the first movie was less stupid than this. There is this giant mechanical drill this fortress has as well. At the end of the movie, we see this giant steamboat as well. Where the hell did that come from? Second problem is the Galel power system. Galel is used for transformations into these hybrid beast things that I know damn well do not exist in the Naruto universe. It's also used for the sword we mentioned earlier. Hell, there is even a stone of Galel that apparently is the source of all life in the world. Which we know damn well is not the case. By the way, question of the day, if I piped the wolf girl or the bat girl, would that make me a furry? This is a very important question, so let me know in the comments below. There is a point where they say Galel is a source of life, and we see this when literal children's souls are harvested for power. Yeah, this Naruto villain is metal as heck. The main villain has this insane transformation as well, but unlike the ladies, I wouldn't pipe, no thanks. The final thing is there is a giant time rift ability that happens, which is crazy, especially when we're talking about power scaling, since this is part one, Naruto! Third are some of the minor inconsistencies in the world of Naruto. There are knights in this movie, which we know do not exist in the world of Naruto. The closest scenes to a knight were probably samurai, which we have kind of seen in Naruto. There are rhinos and flamingos in this movie. You heard that right. RHINOS AND FLAMINGOS! They are animals that do not fit in the world of Naruto! WHY ARE THEY HERE?! WHY ARE THEY HERE?! There are even inconsistencies with the ferret, as it is really hard to believe a creature whose average lifespan is 5 to 10 years old has lived for hundreds of years, especially since the oldest ferret ever recorded is 14 years old! 14 years old! Even character moves slash abilities are unbelievable, since Gar uses a technique we have never seen him use when he fights against these hybrid chicks. And the final point is the easiest one, as this movie takes place between two filler arcs. Meaning this movie objectively cannot happen, because it takes place between two Naruto events that never happened in the manga or light novels. And that is why Naruto and the Son of Galel cannot happen. Though, getting away from the negatives, let's talk about some positives. All the canon characters are consistent with their actions, except for Sakura as she's too useful here, Though, that's not really a bad thing. In fact, she's very useful in ways that are very believable. Galel would have been less stupid if it was a Keke Genkai. Hmm, what else do I like about this movie? Oh yeah, it's a very entertaining experience, and I would definitely watch it again. It has some great action scenes, the villain is more in tune to the themes of Naruto, and overall, it's a great watch. I give it to low to mid 9 out of 10, which low 9 means it's the equivalent of someone getting a 9 to 93 on a test slash quiz, and a midnight mean a 94 to 96. Mean regardless, this movie gets an A. There wasn't really a lot to talk about in terms of like glaring issues with the movie. And while there are a lot of inconsistencies, again, I just overall really enjoyed this movie. Again, 9 out of 10. I mean, that's a, that's a really good rating. <laughs> and this is another edition of why the Naruto movies cannot happen. Guardians of the Crescent Moon edition. Like the first of it, I'll be talking about why this movie is not canon and why it, well, cannot happen. This is also the last part of the part 1 movies, so if you're interested in me covering the shipping of movies, let me know in the comments below. And now without further ado, let us get right into the video. Alright, so Naruto the movie, Guardians of the Crescent Moon, is the third Naruto movie for the part 1 Naruto section of the series. Although, before I get into this, here is your spoiler warning now as I'll be talking about events in the movie. If you don't care, then, well, here we go. So this Naruto movie, once again, like the last movie, takes place between two filler arcs, which is a big reason why it cannot happen. But besides that, there are a lot of issues with this movie in general that show why it cannot happen. One of the first reasons is, once again, like in previous movies, there are inconsistencies in wildlife and technology of what should and shouldn't be in Naruto. An example of this is where the son of the prince in this movie is playing a Game Boy. I'm serious. A Game Boy! 
Video games have been shown to not be a thing in a Naruto no universe, and I know they have electronic scoreboards, but video games, they're not a piece of technology in a Naruto no universe. Yes, I know in the future, board to place on a Switch, I think it is. That is different because in a war torn era like Naruto, there are not a lot of avenues for leisure technology to advance. Unlike, of course, Boruto. I mean, Boruto will probably be playing some mid-ass games on that Switch, by the way. Not great games like Mario Odyssey or Fire Emblem Free Houses. Then there's the wildlife. There's a circus in this movie. And in that circus, there are rhinos, kangaroos, ferrets, fucking polar bears, zebras, giraffes, and worst of all, a saber tooth tiger. What in the hell is this thing doing in a Naruto film? Now, to be fair, it's kind of cool. But on the other hand, none of this makes any damn sense. Especially the polar bears. What are they doing in a circus in the summer? What is an extinct creature doing here? Why are any of these creatures here? And these woolly mammoths would fucking die in the heat. This is the same problem as the last movie, Notch Up to 100. It doesn't make any sense at all. And that's just one of the problems of this movie. The second problem was the world building was cheap. The thing is that for a movie, it can make sense for Sonai to know the prince, but this is not developed well at all to make it believable, which means your belief in this movie happening in canon decreases. This is further confounded by the fact there's an actual castle and knights or royal guard in this movie which doesn't make any sense in a world of ninjas. Oh my god, I'm repeating criticisms from the last movie. The same tech issues, the wildlife issues, the knight armor. Hell, this movie has a fat villain like the last movie. They literally copy and pasted from the last movie. Are you fucking kidding me? But yeah, as far as I'm aware, there are no kingdoms like this in Naruto, especially considering the fact that Japan already has their equivalent of knights. You know, samurai. As far as I'm aware, as well, there are no monarchies in Naruto, the only equivalent being Akage, and they are more military-based, kind of like a shogun. And again, no fucking monarchies! This could at least be terrible for the Land of Snow, but after a while, it becomes a bit too glaring. Naruto and heck, even Boruto used the feudal lord system. Unless these guys are aliens, then they ain't monarchs! I'm serious, the only monarchy you see in Naruto is the Otsutsuki royal family, which is on another planet! And now that brings us to the final problem with this movie, Sakura being useful. I'm serious, it's an actual problem because it makes no sense with the way they make her useful. So apparently, she has a healing ability in this movie to unpetrify someone. Meaning, she can use medical ninjutsu to undo someone who has been turned to stone. Now, I need you to think about that for a second. Look at towards the mountains, the sea, the forest, wherever in your mind, to figure out how Sakura could do this in Part 1 Naruto. Disregarding the fact that she did not learn medical ninjutsu until after Naruto said peace out to the village for like three years. Did you find it? No. Good, because you shouldn't be able to find it or be able to. When the hell has medical ninjutsu worked like that? Now, to be fair, we don't see any Naruto characters in canon get turned to stone at all, and it is possible medical ninjutsu can do that. It can maybe undo someone who's been petrified. However, <laughs> that would have to be handed off to someone who's a medical ninjutsu god like Tsunade, not Sakura! <laughs> Dude, despite working on medical ninjutsu in between four arcs, should not be able to do something like this! <laughs> because I don't know if you guys know this, <laughs> but petrification is kind of hard to undo, especially if you've seen characters like when Krillin got spat on by the devil and the Lang's Goku and company went for <laughs> And then you see Sakura do it like it's nothing, as a novice medical ninjutsu student. And you think to yourself, this is BS! <laughs> Seriously, the other movies have made Sakura useful in ways that make sense. This one does not! <laughs> sure, you could try to argue it's more in character, but where was that in part one? Oh yeah, training while Naruto was away! <laughs> 
besides her beating her bad guy, which I'm fine with, feels like they put this in here so Kakashi would not be fine with one arm since it got turned to stone in this movie. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, I'm turning to the Joker. This movie's making so little sense. I'm turning to the Joker. Oh my god. In conclusion, this movie did so many things wrong when it came to Naruto lore. It put in wildlife and tech that should not be in Naruto. It had weak role building for the movie. And had Sakura do something that did not make any sense at all. And that is why I gave this movie a 10 out of 10. I enjoyed despite these flaws. It was a fun watch. But yeah, this movie objectively cannot happen at all. And that is why all the Naruto Part 1 movies cannot happen. Well, unless we get another one somehow, but I highly doubt that right now. Stay tuned for the next installment of the series where we cover Naruto Shippuden, the movie. Which one, you ask? I said the movie, not a movie. It's literally called Naruto Shippuden, the movie. Really, it should be called Naruto Shippuden, the movie, Priests in Peril, but then again, that could be a bad title. So let me know your ideas on what the movie should be called. I like to hear your ideas or not should be called, should have been called, since the movie has been out for like, how long? Seriously, Naruto Shippuden, the movie, really? And anyway, shout out to our patrons, and my to our patrons, Nice Slasher and Gabe Tidwell, their names on screen. If you want more shows like these, go to my Patreon, which is linked in the description. I'm doing a Patreon VC for $5 and up tiers once a week. We watch anime, discuss videos, and more. Socials are on screen and join Discord, but as a Patreon, also you get more perks, such as, again, join that VC. And be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment below your favorite part of the video. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Let's get to 4K, subscribe, and click the bell to not miss a series when it drops. And that's all I have to say. Cue that outro. So we ain't gonna lie, life's tough Try to get by, life's rough Try to do it right, it's not enough Even though you try, you still mess up But I'm still gonna fight for what I love Still gonna die for what I love Still gonna try, I won't give up Still gonna fight until I've won They say I'm way too obsessed And I've got nothing left And I'm not quite